Hey guys, this is Nick and today we finally have an affordable Linux laptop to review. The Slimbook Essential is basically the most affordable from the Spanish Linux manufacturer. It comes in at 550 euros with the 20% tax included, so I think it's time we took a look at what we got for that price. Okay, so the Slimbook Essential. It's an Ultrabook that comes in at 14 inch or 15 inch, but the 15 inch has a different chassis, different keyboard and different specs. So this review will only apply to the 14 inch model. Now the 14 inch only comes with Intel CPUs, but the 15 inch can go to AMD CPUs as well. But let's focus on the review unit that I've got, which is the 14 inch model. So it uses a 10th gen Intel Core i3 and can be spec'd up to a Core i7, which brings the price up to 700 euros. It comes with 8GB of RAM as standard, which is nice, and it has a full HD display, which Slimbook calls almost bezel-less, but it still has sizable top and bottom bezels anyway, although it's still a lot better than a lot of other devices at that price point. The display is matte, and the 1080p resolution is more than enough for that size, although it isn't extremely bright. Just like me. Now oh, wait a minute. The viewing angles are really good though, and the matte coating acts as a nice anti-glare solution. The colors seem a bit muted to me, not that vivid, but it's far from being bad. It's a sharp, not very reflective, and good looking little display. The laptop only comes with SSDs with 256GB as the default, which is already plenty, especially since you're using Linux out of the box, which doesn't use much disk space anyways. Now in terms of build quality, the laptop chassis is made of aluminium, with a nice dark grey finish. The bottom plate is made out of black plastic, as are the bezels and the hinge assembly. Speaking of the hinge, it can open up to 180 degrees, which is probably completely useless, except that it makes from some nice promo shots. Now that hinge is pretty rigid and doesn't cause any screen wobble when typing. It's a well-built laptop without flex, although you'll see some amount of bend on the keyboard assembly, especially in the middle. Now I wish these chassis would be reinforced down the middle, it would really give them a nice premium, a more sturdy feeling. Please just put a little strut in the middle of the keyboard that will hold the pressure. Still, the laptop itself is pretty hefty at 1.34 kilograms, and you feel that it's a sturdy device. In a few weeks of use, it hasn't been scratched or flexed or even took a dent, so that's something. The branding is a bit big for my taste though, with a big Slimbook logo underneath the screen and another big one on the back of the display. Now, I'm not against branding on devices, but this is a bit too much for my taste. I think it would look a bit more tasteful with slimmer logos. Kinda ironic for a Slimbook to have a thick logo. You also get those cursed stickers for HDMI and GNU slash Linux. But since everyone knows that these things make your computer go faster, just like RGB, I will not remove them. In terms of I.O., you get a pop-out Ethernet jack, a microSD card slot, USB 2, the power button, and the audio jack on the left side, and a USB-C port, USB 3, HDMI, and the barrel charger on the right side. The back is just pure cooling vents. But the power button placement is a bit annoying, as when you pick up the device from the left side, you're bound to press it, and then you'll have to dismiss the pop-up that would let you turn it off, sleep, or restart. The keyboard is okay. This here is a Spanish layout, but you can ask Slimbook for other layouts if you'd prefer. It has a nice tux key with another Slimbook logo. And this really makes me think that we need to revamp the image of this little tux guy for when we want to slap him on a key, or just using in marketing purposes. I love the little plum penguin, but he doesn't scream elegance, modernity, and he doesn't really convey any sense of meaning or feature when you put it on a key. But I am French, so what do I know about these things? The keys are a bit small for my taste here. There is ample room to add larger keys, and the layout just feels off to me with small half-size arrow keys with the page up and down keys located right above the left and right ones. Then again, I am really used to the French layout, so maybe it's just a matter of habit. Key travel is pretty short here, but the whole board doesn't feel mushy, and there is good amount of bounce back. The sound is a bit too clacky for my tastes, but it won't annoy your neighbors nearly as much as a mechanical keyboard or even a Mac keyboard. It's also backlit. 
The trackpad is pretty big for a 14 inch laptop and it feels really smooth, although I couldn't confirm if it was glass or not, but it felt like it. It's precise, your fingers really don't get stuck or stutter on it, and it's pretty nice to see a good trackpad on a cheaper device like this one. So all in all, for 550 euros you get solid build quality, a good screen, a decent keyboard, a good trackpad, good I.O., and very tinny speakers. It's a sub $600 laptop, so I wouldn't expect amazing sound, but still, they sound pretty bad. Ecosystem of online services, email address, tasks, calendar, email, contacts, etc. As always with most laptops, the webcam exists. It's basic 720p, pretty grainy, but if you're extremely handsome like me, then you can make do with it. Now in terms of performance, my review unit ships with an Intel i3 1005G1, which is a dual core, 4 thread CPU. It has a base clock of 1.2 GHz with turbo boost up to 3.4, and this nets it a Geekbench score of 1229 in single core and 2574 in multi core. Now the single core score is actually not that bad, it comes super close to the Ryzen 7 4800H that I reviewed on the KDE Slimbook. Now in terms of multi-core, obviously it's a dual-core chip, so don't expect to be doing very heavy lifting in terms of video rendering, in terms of gaming, or really CPU-intensive tasks. But that's not the goal of that laptop anyway. It ships with Intel UHD graphics, which are enough to drive a 4K display at 60Hz, and support DirectX 12 and OpenGL 4.5, although that's not a chip you'll want to use for AAA gaming. Lighter indie titles play fine, like Hades for example, which got around 45 to 60 FPS through a complete gaming session at the native resolution, which is really nice. Now in real world use, the apps open fast, the computer never feels sluggish or unresponsive, and I think the 8GB of RAM really help with that, even when you're confronted with the RAM gobbling monster that is Chrome. Now the battery life is average between 5 and 7 hours depending on what you're doing on the laptop for a typical work day for me with a lot of web browsing, two browsers open with about 10 tabs each of web apps and websites with a little bit of video conferencing, a little bit of audio and just a few videos here and there during my lunch break. It lasted about 5 hours with brightness at 80%. I think if you reduce that a little bit more and you don't use Wi-Fi as much or you don't use as many tabs or browsers, you can probably stretch that to 7 or 8 hours with no problems. On that note, my review unit ships with Slimbook OS, which is a custom Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, with a few more pre-installed apps, including Slimbook Battery, which let me switch power profiles as needed to save up on that battery. It's also an app you can install on other Linux distros if you'd like. Now it's also interesting to note that you can open this thing up and replace some components yourself. The RAM and the SSD are both user accessible with a few screws removed, so you can upgrade this thing a bit further down the line. Now in general, this little laptop is a solid performer for day-to-day -day tasks, for office tasks or for a student, web browsing, email, some light video conferencing, even some light gaming, it works fine, the performance is really good. So what do you get from Slimbook for 550 euros? Well, you get, like I said, a solid build, a good screen, a decent keyboard, a good trackpad, good audio, and good performance. Basically, it's a little all-rounder that works really well for most day-to-day -day tasks. At that price point, the Slimbook Essential is really a great option. Remember, it's 550 euros, not dollars, and it's including the 20% general European value-added tax. Without that tax, the laptop comes in at 445 euros, which makes for about 550 US dollars. So looking up online, the only competition I could find at that price point were Chromebooks, which generally ship with terrible Celeron processors, or refurbished units, which came generally damaged or with plastic bodies and not aluminium. Now the only viable competitor that I could find at that price point is the Lenovo IDPad Flex, which is a 2-in-1 convertible laptop with a touchscreen and comes with an AMD Ryzen 3 CPU. Now, of course the Slimbook Essential isn't a device I would use myself because my needs are a bit more advanced than this, I need some nice CPU horsepower on my laptop and I need some good graphics. I generally tend to go towards Ryzen CPUs and this makes me think what would the Slimbook Essential 14 look with the Ryzen CPU inside? Ah, uh, well, yes, probably something like that. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. And if you want to watch this somewhere else than on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey. I left a link in the description below. 
If you want to help support the channel and make it grow, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and whatever the subscription tier that you opt for, you will get access to the weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics on cover. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!